So hi again, my name is George. I'm from uh, TV Rebel and Backstage TV from the Czech Republic. And hopefully I will try uh, not to bother you long. So uh, let's start, okay? No way, I'm like, people, there's people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're looking forward to you and your answers. So <laughs> let's start with a, quite a uh, ugly one, but I have to ask, uh, how do you spend the COVID days? How do you spend the COVID days? And what do you think about the future after COVID? Now I think we finally see the light at the end of a tunnel yeah. a little bit. So uh, what have gonna, you done? I was going to say that there is that light at the end of the tunnel. I'm happy about that. Mm -hmm. It was definitely dark days. You know, I really felt for so many people, you know, all around the world. You know, it was something that was happening to everyone, not only myself. So um, a lot of it just felt like I was out of control, you know, it was out of our, out of our hands, you know, mm -hmm. and knowing that was something I had to learn, you know, just like, okay, it's out of my control, so I shouldn't stress out about it. Mm -hmm. um, happy that the tension of stress is going down. Um, the places are starting to open up here, especially in, in LA. I believe in the next week, everything will open up again. Um, and so this is exciting and shows are happening and this is extremely exciting to see that shows and shows are, are starting to open up and I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing my brothers in the band to jam again, mm -hmm. get ready for a tour and, um, and to play live again. Totally. And how did you become a singer? How was your start with, you know, your singing career? I think it was by mistake. <laughs> like I, okay. I'm at a very young age. I remember in junior high school, I believe it was, that I was kind of forced to take a choir class where, you know, entire choir where, like, you're going to be the tenors, you're going to be, you know. The, I, my voice is baritone bass, and I was the only one to okay. sing that. So my teacher was like, wow, you have a very unique voice. Not many people were born with baritone bass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you so do... they didn't. They didn't tell you you're gonna grow <laughs> in the <No>. choir. <laughs> I was okay. like, uh, yeah, it's like these songs are horrible to do, but since you're saying that I'm special, then maybe I can do something with this. And my mother was a music teacher as well, so she was encouraging, you know, this a hundred percent. So it pretty much started that way, and then I was a roadie for a friend's band at like 14 years old, and we all grew up together, and I and I was a roadie helping them out and I knew all the songs and that singer left and I ended up becoming a singer of that band because that mm -hmm. singer left and um, I knew the songs and it worked out in a way where, you know, the transition mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, <cool. laughs> worked out really well. And are you now uh, working with your voice somehow? Are you like practicing or using some special techniques or, you know, still I'm learning something? Or I'm Fortunately, not. But I'm going to start very soon. Um, damn it, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two, and I got you already. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. As I realized, I was trying to sing one of our songs, like I was cooking or something. I was like, oh yeah, this part is like. <coughs> <coughs> it's like oh, right. I need to practice so. I, I definitely will be doing this. I also, uh, I, I felt this, you know, it's funny that you asked that question, but it, it's really important, you know, um, it's like a muscle, you know, you have to train it. And mm -hmm. I have those dreams where uh, I, I have that nightmare of not being prepared before a show. And um, I definitely can't wait to start practicing again. And then I'll have mm -hmm. that, like, okay, it's there. But <laughs> practice is definitely needed. How are your memories uh, like when you started with Sepultura? Uh, 
what is what do you have in mind when you think of that period like i don't know the first meeting the band first gig first recording and stuff like that uh is there anything that you remember often or anything like like the highlight of these memories i think you know the most important thing i was trying to that i get reminded of is how i was trying to prove myself but mm -hmm. that i also just wanted to to be myself you know not uh try to create something that I wasn't. So just being myself, staying very humble and um, and just trying to find my way within the band. I knew it would take some time joining a band that already had such a big status. Mm -hmm. So we knew that it would take years in order to gain that respect from fans, um, from band members, um, from everyone around us. So I, I went in thinking that, like, you know, this is going to evolve. This is only going to get better. At least that's the goal that I had um, mm -hmm. to do. So um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, when I look back, I, I, I love every album that we worked on. And they were so important to get to where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that we're very fortunate still going and still coming up with creative uh, music. You know, mm -hmm. just the important aspect. I didn't want to look back and say, like, oh, we did that already. Or, uh, you know, it's like, I always want to look forward, you know, I look forward to, to touring and writing new albums, and I just want to have that joy and fun, and I want to be able to hear that in each album, that evolution, you know, that, oh, yeah, I learned something about that time period. Um, I was reading this, or I was seeing this movie, and it had an impact on the album, um, and it, The next album, something else. The next album, something else. So mm -hmm. I think it's going in a good, good way. <laughs> and is there any of the albums you've made which is your favorite still? Like some something like you you thought, okay, this is the highlight of my career. Is there any album like this? Um, I know there are certain points where it was like such a good time as far as like, okay, this is the album that we're gonna really propel. Um, propel off of. We're going to really show people, you know, and uh, I think when we, it got to like Dante was a great album because we were at that point where we had played so much together as a unit, you know, with Andres, Paulo, Igor, and I um, that it was like, okay, this is, this is where we wanted to get to and then Igor left. Oh, <laughs> and, I, I know. I was, Damn it! I was like, it was such a good You know, we had spent the time touring and and working on other albums before that to get to this point was really great. And then the same thing happened with Jean Dolabella, where he joined and we got to Kairos. And I was like, okay, here we are. This is Hi, a great yeah. album. We're, now we're back. Like we we had some time to get used to him and and everyone playing together. And then he left. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's always like that, right? <laughs> with <laughs> and then with Aloy, you know, we had to break that kind of like junior curse. Like we had a freshman album, Mediator, and we had like the sophomore album, which is Machine Messiah. And I was like, we can just make it to the junior album. <laughs> um, then I know that's going to be really, really good. And so I would have to say this latest album is my favorite i know a lot of artists always say my latest album but it it, it truly is you know By the way, I just love the cover of Quadra album because I studied history and I love these old coins. I love numismatics, so uh, that's why I really love it. And who, who, whose idea it was, or who created the album cover? That, I mean. that was Andreas's idea. You know, it was a really great concept and uh, mm -hmm. a great idea. I, I, I too am a big fan of like history and coins and things like that, and. Mm -hmm. um, just seemed to really fit the mood of the album and what we were going after. So, um, you know, Andreas was the one that came up with that idea. 
um, and the idea of, of the name quadra and each person, you know, living in their own quadra, their own square sector, you know, and, mm-hmm. and those, That's great. you know, given to each person, you know, in each quadra, you know, everybody has their own laws and rules that they abide by or don't. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah that was okay. And, uh, how have you chosen uh, the songs for the new album, or like the live album? Because w- which key have you used, or uh, how was it made? It really was just by uh, talking between us. We were like, hey, we're going to choose the songs that we want to play for Quadro. We're not going to leave it up to the guests. I mean, it's just too much pressure on them. Uh, we'll go to the guests and say, like, hey, do you want to jam this with us? And we were fortunate to have, like, really great players that were able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, we wanted to do a variety, a history of Sepultura, from old songs to new songs, um, and just kind of mix it up, you know, keep it keep it mixed up. Okay. And who is now the most creative guy in Sepultura? Like, who's writing most of the music, who's writing lyrics and stuff like that? Can you tell it to oh, the fans? Boy. Like, uh, <laughs> if... if uh, you know, I would not be that guy. <laughs> definitely uh, the person that is writing the lyrics. There's no doubt about that. And, um, you know, the topics, it's very open with the band as far as, you know, whatever you put in, you know, it, it's definitely considered considered to be used. So that's always a, a great feeling to have that openness with the band. Um, I think... Andreas and Aloy are definitely, you know, the the duo that are creating a lot, um, have created the album um, musically, no doubt about that. I, I, I think, you know, those guys never stop. Aloy is always online, uh, jamming with other people, um, different styles, and Andreas as well is always working and, and writing and playing and jamming. So I think those two are the the force, you know, behind a lot of the music. And so the album, the new one, is out on 13th August, right? And... uh, could be. And so uh, if you should say some kind of a PR words about it, what would you say? Like uh, what the fans will get if they will buy the album? Like which guests or uh, which which one you like the most, for example, if you can say it like that? Or we'll definitely get a history, a good sense of the band Sepultura and the path that they have traveled along with their friends and artists that have they have picked and accompanied, accompanied them on their journey through music. So it's definitely a, a collaboration with unexpected collaboration, spontaneous um, in a way that we didn't expect ourselves. So it's it's something fresh and new for all the fans of Sepultura, old and new. And you also get to see artists from we're fans of as well. So this mm-hmm. is something very unique. Yeah, I have to say I love the song with Devin Townsend, for example. It's He's one of my favorite artists as well. So it's great connection and it rocks like hell. And, yeah, that was, I mean, we were really excited to have him be a part of it. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. And that's what I love about him. You know, he's so creative. And uh, we're very fortunate to have him jam on it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so have you got any, any like favorite song from this album? If you should uh, pick up just one. If I could pick one, I, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have it sitting in front of me, um, so I can't remember the entire track list. Um, but since we are talking about Devin, that was one of my favorites because we never do that song, mm-hmm. and so. That's always fun to do songs that you never do often, and um, and and I love that he participated vocally and 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 also playing guitar. So that was a treat 
Um, so the, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that's probably one of my favorite songs without a doubt, because I never get to hear that song that often and Ooh. it was fun to do. So. so our time is over now, but you can look forward to the rest of the interview next week. See you there. George Rain from Backstage TV.